And all your projects with Deft Wood Stain and Deft Clear Wood Finish. Both are on sale for just $4.88 a quart. And get a $5 rebate on any Peerless Faucet, America's favorite do-it-yourself faucet. This lav faucet is now $16.69 after rebate. Discover brand name quality at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Watch, listen, and win. Find out how at 10. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We're going to begin tonight with memories of the past. This is Veterans Day, as you know, and as the nation officially honors those who fought and died in both popular and unpopular causes, the Russian government has come forward with information about Americans yet unaccounted for in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. This is also the day on which a major American-Vietnamese business connection has been made, overdue in the view of many. And very movingly, we think at least, this was the Veterans Day when a president did what presidents should do more often, get away from the madding crowd to do something special. We will get to it all. First, what the Russians have revealed, that during World War II, American prisoners were executed in the Soviet Union. Here's ABC's Bob Zelnick. As victorious U.S. and Soviet forces celebrated the end of World War II, few knew that back in the Soviet Union, Americans were imprisoned. Some had been liberated from Nazi POW camps by the advancing Russians. Others were airmen forced to land their crippled planes over Soviet-held territory. And some were civilians jailed on trumped-up spy charges. At today's Senate hearing, the top Soviet member of a POW commission, speaking through an interpreter, said there were at least 119 U.S. prisoners and read a letter from Boris Yeltsin about what happened to some of them. The Commission has found evidence of American citizens staying in camps and prisons of the former USSR and discovered shocking facts of some of them being summarily executed by the Stalin regime. Volkaganov said others were forced to renounce their U.S. citizenship and that some of them were still alive in Russia. As for the Korean War, Volkaganov said that a search of secret Russian archives had failed to turn up evidence that any U.S. POWs were transported from Korea to the Soviet Union and he doubted that any Vietnam POWs had been transferred either. And in our times, everything is open in our country, so I believe we would definitely have heard uh, if there was even one case. But one staffer on the committee just back from Moscow said some Russian agencies were uncooperative and had even pressured those with evidence of the transfer of POWs from Korea to the Soviet Union to change their story. Privately, senators on the committee say the story of the Korean War missing is still in its infancy, just where the Vietnam story was before relations with Hanoi improved. Here, too, most of the answers lie with North Korea, not Moscow. Bob Zelnick, ABC News at the Pentagon. We continue with the Vietnam connection. AT&T announced today it is re-establishing direct telephone service between the United States and Vietnam. It is believed to be the biggest business deal between an American company and the Vietnamese government since the end of the war in 1975. A great many American business leaders believe that business conditions like this are long overdue. ABC's Bill Redeker reports tonight from Hanoi. Since the end of the war, a resentful government in Washington has tried to isolate the communist government in Vietnam by leading the international embargo against trade and investment, punishing the Vietnamese for once occupying Cambodia and failing to produce evidence on American POWs. But now look at what's happening. In the last year, the embargo has virtually collapsed, and it is many of America's closest allies Japan, Korea, France, and Taiwan that are responsible. The, the embargo is really not effective, and, and uh, virtually all of, the, all of our allies uh, in, in the Vietnam War were, are already uh, operating here. It has been immensely frustrating for American businessmen, eager to capitalize on Vietnam's 70 million potential customers, eager, too, to employ Vietnam's cheap, well-educated workforce. The U.S. government allows American businessmen to visit Vietnam, but they cannot set up shop. This despite increased cooperation by the Vietnamese in the search for information about missing American servicemen. We haven't found a single clue of information leading to one man that is still living in Vietnam. Businessman Steve Senderling was here 25 years ago with the U.S. Air Force. 
Now, he says, it's time to get down to business. In his case, cellular telephones. The amount of consumerism that exists and uh, the, the private uh, small businesses that are existing is heartening and we feel that that is just going to spread very much like wildfire. Vietnam's vast offshore oil fields are the biggest prize, but the French and Japanese have already been awarded major contracts. Is it too late for American companies? It is never late for, for American companies. Uh, of course, uh, they should come more earlier. Businessmen agree. The U.S. embargo is no longer blocking Vietnam's access to foreign products and aid. It is only blocking American companies from the Vietnam market. Bill Redeker, ABC News, Hanoi. Governor Clinton attended a Veterans Day ceremony in Little Rock today. He promised that when he gets to the White House, he will seek a final and full resolution of the POW MIA issue. For his part, President Bush went to the Vietnam Memorial in the middle of the night, unannounced, without any fanfare, without the press, to share in what surely was a more intimate moment than presidents are usually allowed. Francis Joseph McCann, Jr., Robert James Nicklin, for a few minutes, George Bush was simply another American who felt, as Senator Gore said today, that the wall had helped the healing process. Here's ABC's John Martin. John Cook Hayes. It took them nearly three days to read all the names, 58,143 men and women who died or did not return from Vietnam. Ronald Kenneth Schultz. For 10 years, people have come to the wall to talk to those they lost. Corky Condon's father never came back. I feel a presence that I didn't feel before I was able to come to the wall. Paul Frazier and his father both served in Vietnam. Your hand comes towards you in the reflection, and it feels like your friends are there touching the other side of your hand as you put it up on the wall, and you touch their names and you have that contact. This morning, to show they have not forgotten, veterans marched in a light rain down the streets near the wall. And then people spoke, a Native American woman. There is a spiritual presence in these granite walls. These spirits bring a message. But who am I to tell you these things? A university professor. We come to this altar, this threshold between the past the present and the future. And each time we leave more whole, more healed, more centered. A Marine who served in Vietnam but lost his freedom in Lebanon. We all paid. We all have the right to speak our thoughts here, to remember aloud what it cost us individually and as a nation. Oh, think of me and carry on. They also heard the architect who created the wall. The wall was designed for you, for everyone to come and bring their thoughts, their emotions to the wall. You make it come alive. So on a day to celebrate the worth of all veterans, they came to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, the wall to talk to those who they loved and lost. John Martin, ABC News, Washington. In a moment, we'll go back to contemporary politics. Governor Clinton, a lot of people want him to remember his promises. On the American agenda tonight, the City Pride Bakery in Pittsburgh and the miracle on 39th Street. And a veteran police officer who finds himself in trouble over the number seven. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Brought to you by TheraFlu, flu and cold medicine. 1 a.m., still awake. Your fever's worse. The coughing and congestion just keep you awake. This flu you handled today now feels out of control. You've got the night flu and you need maximum relief. TheraFlu introduces new maximum strength nighttime, the strongest hot liquid formula ever made. It relieves your worst flu symptoms so you can get the sleep you desperately need. New Maximum Strength Nighttime from TheraFlu. Maximum flu relief so you can sleep. I try to ignore my sensitive teeth, but they hurt. 
Sensodyne helps stop the pain that can make you stop brushing, could lead even to tooth loss. And now, Sensodyne has fluoride. Fluoride, great. New Sensodyne helps stop the pain of sensitive teeth. After examining, testing, it's a fact. You can buy new Preparation H hydrocortisone cream with the maximum strength available without a prescription to relieve problem itch. New Preparation H hydrocortisone cream. Prescription strength without a prescription. In Little Rock today, Governor Clinton told reporters he's going to go to Washington next week to visit congressional leaders, and he'll also meet with President Bush. He has also made it clear he will not be rushed into making governmental appointments, even though he's under pressure from a lot of interest groups to do so. Here's ABC's Jim Wooten. Governor Clinton today forcefully reiterated his campaign pledge to allow gay men and women to serve in all branches of the American military. The question here is simply status. Should people who have served their country with distinction, many of them in, with battlefield ribbons, uh, and who have never had any kind of question about their conduct raised, be uh, booted out of the military? Not if he has anything to do with it, he said, and on January 20th, he will. That particular commitment, gays in the military, was but one of many the governor made on his way to winning the presidency last week. Now public interest groups, special interest groups, and advocacy organizations are putting down their markers, asking him to make good on his pledges. Today alone, for example, the Carnegie Foundation announced a sizable proposal asking the president-elect to reorganize the government before he makes any appointments to it and the National Women's Political Caucus publicized a long list of women available for jobs in the Clinton administration. Unfortunately, very often the good old boys only know the good old boys. It's our job to see that they have such a qualified list that they can't say ever for any job that they can't find a qualified woman for the job. Clinton said he welcomed their list and any other reminders of his commitments. All they're doing is basically asking me to do what I said I'd do in this election, which is to give unprecedented opportunities to, to women and to members of racial minorities. And so with increasing pressure on Clinton to deliver the goods, the transition pace has quickened. A news conference tomorrow and next week, meetings in Washington with President Bush, who called today with an invitation to the White House. A wonderful call, said the president-elect, which means the 92 campaign is really finally over. Jim Wooten, ABC News, Little Rock. We'll cover that news conference live at 1 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. The Assistant Secretary of State who was fired by President Bush yesterday for organizing a search through the passport records of Bill Clinton and Ross Perot said today she had done nothing inappropriate. Elizabeth Tamposi says she only wanted to satisfy media requests for information about the two candidates. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up nearly 15 points today, closing at 32.40, and the trading was very heavy. Overseas today, there was a decision by the Church of England as controversial as any in its 450-year history. Church leaders have voted to ordain women as priests. The decision brought tears of joy from supporters inside the meeting. There were powerful feelings on both sides of the issue in the Church of England itself and outside. The Vatican said today this was a major obstacle to reconciliation with the Catholic Church. Outside Church House in London, those who have long fought for greater women's rights in the Anglican Church celebrated, even though the Church may face serious defections from clergymen and laymen who were opposed. When we come back, the refugees in the Bosnian detention camps, wondering if the world has forgotten them. A short while ago, Carol Walters was troubled with arthritis pain. But she promised Pete they'd go for their run. So she took a Motrin IV. The same medicine as in the Motrin doctors have prescribed for years, but in non-prescription strength. And just one Motrin IV works as well as two regular aspirin. So now, Carol's ready. Let's go, Pete. Pete's been ready for a while. Motrin IV, the relief of Motrin in non-prescription strength. All of these toilet bowl cleaners may clean, but not one of them disinfects. So you don't get your toilet totally clean unless you use Lysol toilet bowl cleaner. It easily reaches tough rust stains, and unlike those others, it disinfects for a deep down clean. Don't do part of the job. Get your toilet totally clean with Lysol toilet bowl cleaner. They say build a better mousetrap and the world will beat a path to your door. Introducing the Decon Ultraset Cupboard Snap Trap. It helps protect kids, pets, and your fingers from accidental contact. So all you catch are mice. 
Easy to set, easy disposal. New Decon Ultra Set. At last, a better mousetrap. Raymond, why don't you try the cherry pie? I don't know. You sure loved cherry yesterday. When? When you were constipated. What? I gave him this new cherry Phillips. It's a whole new experience. Try the new Phillips. Smooth cherry and new mint with no chalky aftertaste. Wait till you taste it. Maybe they should put it on the menu. The effort to evacuate women and children from Sarajevo in Bosnia-Herzegovina before winter has run into trouble again. Several Red Cross convoys were canceled today after the driver of one bus was wounded by shrapnel. The Red Cross and UN relief agencies say there are as many as 10,000 people in detention camps throughout Bosnia waiting for some place to go. No other country will take them. ABC's Dave Marish has just finished a reporting tour of the region. He visited two detention camps where Bosnian Muslims are being held. It seems impossible for anyone to forget the pictures taken in August of the emaciated Muslim prisoners at the Ternopolye concentration camp. Today, Ternopolye is no longer a prison camp, but about 2,500 refugees, most of them elderly men and women and children, are still kept there, and they have been forgotten. When I visited the camp last week, I was besieged by requests to call the International Red Cross. We haven't seen them in a week. They almost never come here anymore. I don't even have shoes, just my socks, and that's all I have. Relief professionals have given up on improving Ternopolye, but they're unable to empty it. Neighboring Croatia, which has accepted close to 700,000 refugees from Bosnia, refuses to take any more. And Western nations, including the United States, have been no more willing to take in Bosnians. So today, dozens of people cram into small rooms in what was once the Ternopolye village schoolhouse. Hundreds now live in the old school auditorium. Food is scant, medicine all but non-existent, and the sanitary conditions are dangerous. That is human waste mixing with the mud of the school grounds. Forty miles away, another notorious camp, Manyacha, is still full of prisoners. These are 3,500 hard cases, men the Serbs consider Muslim and Croatian fighters. They will be released only in exchange for Serbian POWs. <coughs> By day, the prisoners doze and play with handmade cards. At night, I was told, it's too cold to sleep. Manyacha sits on a windswept, treeless plateau at 4,000 feet altitude. The men there say if they're still housed in these cattle barns in January, many will die. Most of these prisoners believe this will be their last stop in Yugoslavia. What's next? That, a chorus of prisoners said, is up to Europe and the world. I'm Dave Marish, ABC News, Manyacha Camp, Northern Bosnia. There's going to be more about this from Dave Marish later this evening on Nightline. When we come back, the American agenda. We chose AT&T because our 800 service is our front door. If it shuts down, we shut down. To us, a single 800 call could be worth thousands of dollars. If a customer dials our 800 number and can't get through, it's like telling them to take their business somewhere else. When you have competition like I do, you better be there for your customers. about to change the way you take cold medicine forever. Now, for the first time, you can take your favorite juice with all its great taste and stir in new Dristan juice mix-in. Dristan will ease your cough and nasal congestion and soothe your pain, all without drowsiness. New Dristan juice mix-in. The newest way to take care of your cold. Only from the makers of Dristan. Another Meineke profile of the smart and thrifty. There he is! He's not a celebrity, he's not a millionaire, but he knows how to enjoy life. And how did he get to this serene setting, casting his fate to the wind this weekend? It's no secret, he saved his pennies. He went without lunch a few times. And I didn't pay a lot for a muffler at Meineke. Oh. <laughs> Come to Meineke Discount Mufflers, the muffler and brake specialist, where you'll get more life out of your car and more miles for your dollar. At Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot for a muffler. Attention heartburn sufferers. If antacids work, why do I keep getting heartburn? 
You know, frequent heartburn may be a sign of a more serious medical problem. Your doctor has treatment plans that can help. Frequent heartburn. Isn't it time you talk to your doctor? Nighttime. One of the worst times for pain. Minor arthritis pain. Muscle aches. Pain that seems to go on. That's why you need Ultra Strength Ben Gay with more pain relievers than we've ever had. You can say goodnight to your pain with Ultra Strength Ben Gay. We have put jobs on the American agenda tonight. The jobs and a second chance. We hear the stories with discouraging frequency. Another company closes down. Another factory moves out and hundreds of workers are suddenly out on the street. If they're lucky, the workers find other jobs or go on unemployment if they're not. This time, for a group of workers in Pittsburgh, it would be a different story. Our agenda reporter is Karen Burns. An entire community is touched when a plant shuts down. Jobs are lost. Taxes aren't paid. Wages aren't spent. People in Pittsburgh have seen their city lose over 100,000 manufacturing jobs in the last decade. But this time, people fought back. They said it wasn't gonna happen. And it happened. We all got a piece of the rock. They call it the miracle on 39th Street. In 1989, when the Braun Bakery left Pittsburgh, 250 people were thrown out of work. Rather than becoming victims, they took action. By throwing us out on the streets, so to speak, they just brought us that much closer together. We did have the experience, and there was enough of us. So we got the idea, and we went after it. They had a vision to build a bakery that workers would own, that would reach out and hire the chronically unemployed, those on welfare and the disabled. They would call it City Pride, the bakery with a heart. Watch your hands! But these were bakers, not business people. They needed $10 million and professional advice. They hired Dan Curtis, a retired bakery manager. We need some stuff in here. Curtis developed a financial plan, and with it, he began his pitch. We would say, well, if you, will you commit if this person commits, and this person, I will commit if that person commits. And I did what any mayor would do. I went out in twisted arms and got them, got them some financing. And I said, from a banker's standpoint, this doesn't make sense at all. But from the standpoint of the community, the elements are here. It took a most unlikely mix of people and a complicated financial arrangement to bring city pride to life. In the end, 25 public and private agencies, three religious orders, and four banks came together to fund the project. For the workers, it meant great sacrifice. They went without salary for three years, taking surveys, assessing property, buying equipment, building their bakery from scratch. I had to use my, uh, my retirement money. Unemployment ran out. I called for uh, food stamps. She said, why are you calling for food stamps? I said, I'm hungry. I had to pull one of my kids out of college. I'm still paying my back taxes. What finally made City Pride a viable enterprise was Giant Eagle, the city's largest supermarket chain. They agreed to buy $17 million worth of bread the first year and sell it under the Giant Eagle name. Was this a moral decision or a business decision? I think it's both. You know, I think a moral obligation for companies like ours is there. On the business side, we have an opportunity here to have a neat product. City Pride was launched and ready to keep its promise. Since September, they've hired and trained 160 people, many considered unemployable. They will all own stock in the company. Marpessa Green has been on and off welfare for several years. I'm determined. I, I feel as though this is part of my bakery. I run it as if so it was mine. What's that like for you, bringing in these new people who haven't worked in a long time? Well, at first I was, I was afraid. I was leery. He was, uh, hey, you know. But you can't always believe what you read. These people are here and they're learning. In these next weeks, City Pride must make the transition from a bakery with a heart to a solid financial enterprise and tough competitor. If they do that, they will have set a powerful example. How did you know you could start an entire operation like this from scratch? We had faith in Joe, Chuck, the 50 of us. You had faith in each other? Yes. United we stand, right. divided we fall. So we stood together. Have you stayed together? Yes. 
Yeah. Karen Burns, ABC <laughs> News, Pittsburgh. The best news on tonight's broadcast. Back in a moment. You're just in time. If you hurry to Red Lobster, you can get one of our three new trios. Enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks. Like our seafood trio. Sweet snow crab, shrimp, scampi, and broiled fish. It's just $9.99. It's so good. We've also got a big new shrimp trio and a new mixed grill. Three trios you'll love for just $9.99. So hurry in for something great. Tonight at Red Lobster. I used to take aspirin to relieve minor arthritis pain until my doctor told me one Advil is as effective as two regular aspirin and is gentler to my stomach. For my pain, I prefer Advil. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Mmm, a late night snack. And no bag keeps it fresher than Ziploc brand storage bags with the gripper zipper. Tough, tiny teeth you can feel gripping so you know freshness is locked in. Honey. Caught red-handed. Mm. There's only one Ziploc. In art, taste is subjective, but in life, good taste is well-defined. Fancy Feast Gourmet Cat Food. Exceptionally moist and delicious. Fancy Feast. Good taste is easy to recognize. Why Centrum Silver? Because you're over 50 and you're just hitting your stride. Centrum Silver Vitamins. Because the latest scientific research about changing nutritional needs after 50 is built in. Centrum Silver. It's a great time to be silver. Tonight on Nightline, it could be Bill Clinton's first foreign crisis. Part two of our report on the horrors in Bosnia. We hear from survivors of a massacre tonight. Finally from us this evening, an unlucky seven. In Dearborn, Michigan, a police officer with more than 15 years experience has been suspended for three days and ordered to undergo a psychiatric evaluation. And it has much to do with the number seven. Here's ABC's Tom Foreman. Police Corporal Brian Yinger learned how to write the number seven more than 30 years ago, with a little short line across the downstroke to keep it from being confused with the number one. This is the way I write my sevens. But recently, his employer, the Dearborn Police Department, ordered him to change. And the department wants me to write the sevens that way. I've been through some strange things on the, on the job, but never as anything as, as far out as this. Police administrators say Yinger's sevens confuse other people in the department, that sometimes they look like F's or Z's. But more importantly, they say Yinger for years has argued with orders from above, and they had to draw the line on sevens, so they suspended him. It is a very deliberate defiance of an order, and it's, uh, he is focusing on the seven, and he is missing the whole point. Still, at a nearby college, math professors say the police administrators are missing the point. Cross sevens are used all over Europe and by many Americans. Here in Detroit, the, the percentage is actually fairly high. I'll see it from probably 20 to 25 percent of my students. Apparently, it's an accepted practice everywhere in the U.S. and the world, with the exception of Dearborn Police Department. Corporal Yinger will appeal the suspension. Friends are supporting him with bumper stickers. They say it is not fair to make everyone toe the line. Tom Foreman, ABC News, Dearborn, Michigan. And that's our report on World News Tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. An important nightline later. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. It's the year of the woman on Tool Time. Daddy made me producer, and so now I'll be running the show. I can take her. <laughs> Home improvement. Yes, all right! And Doogie Hauser's stud. Or spud? Which one of you guys is more likely to please a woman in every way? Daddy! A special Doogie after Home Improvement Wednesday. If she had a fever, you wouldn't wait a week to see the doctor. If she were hungry, you wouldn't wait a few days to feed her. So why wait even a day to fix the brakes on a car you drive her around in? At Midas, we don't just fix your brakes right. We can fix them right the very same day you bring in your car. Think about it. Midas, because your brakes can't wait. To laugh, to cry, to kiss your troubles goodbye. There's no place like Cheers.
Weeknights at 10.30, only on...